Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast, the show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to the Content 10X Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, and this week I have a super guest on the show and it's a conversation all about how a really niche brick and mortar business has embraced content marketing and content repurposing to grow their business. So my guest is a very good friend and also a client of mine too here at Content 10X, Mike Richards. And Mike is the CEO of the Treasury Recruitment Company. And thanks to a really smart decision that he made back in 2018. He is also the host of the Treasury Recruitment Corner um, sorry, the Treasury Career Corner, I should know. <laughs> given we this, Mike. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hello, Amy. And uh, amazing to be on the show and a bit strange to be the other side of the microphone because usually you do your own podcast, I do mine, and I'm, I'm usually the one asking the questions, sitting back, and now it's your turn to get your own back. So I'm Excellent. yeah, just just a bit nervous. But yeah. <laughs> No, you don't need to be nervous. So so we, so we first both met back in, uh, well, we were in our mastermind together with yeah. Chris and at the time you were looking really to grow your your personal brand and position yourself front and center in the treasury industry weren't you so I know that your business has been running since 2002 right isn't it yeah that's when we set up uh yeah we start set up as MR recruitment originally and then we rebranded a number of years ago to the treasury recruitment company Mm because that's exactly what we do it does exactly what it says on the tin we recruit treasury specialist finance guys so treasury staff for global corporates uh, treasury analyst at the junior level through to global treasurer on an international scale so we recruit for nike in oregon chanel in new york uh johnson matthew in the uk and uk corporates uh right the way across europe and right the way across to asia pacific but it's just treasury it's very special it's very niche uh and we love doing it as well so yeah, so you you absolutely are the recruitment partner for such great big large corporate clients, aren't you? And yeah. um, I guess what really what I really love about your story, which is why I really wanted to bring you on the show and and let you share your story of content and and your podcast and everything, is that quite a few of the people that we work with at Content Ten X, where they are doing really well with content, they have a business that is largely based on content so when we work with people who are say you know business coaches or people who run ma- or masterminds run memberships things like that they're creating content to market their businesses but then ultimately their business is content as well it's just basically premium paid content so being memberships being even live events it's all content whereas yours you know your your end product what you offer as a, as a product and a service is is a very you know niche it's recruitment services to these top corporate in a very specific industry but you've done so so well on your content journey to really grow your business which is why Mm. i think it's such an interesting angle so i guess the first question mike is um why was it important to you to create content and embrace content marketing well if we go back i mean as you say when we were on the mastermind together i was at the beginning of that content journey, really. Uh, yeah. I looked at doing a podcast many years ago before they were really, you know, in the, their infancy. I said to an ex-business partner, I said, oh, I should do a podcast, you know, because I used to listen to them, and uh, you know, when they were first coming out. And he was like, oh, no, I don't think it's right. And I thought, do you know what? I, and I put it on hold because I thought maybe one day. And then when I was with you and Chris and we were talking about whether I should do more YouTube stuff and was that way to do it. And I thought, do you know, I don't even watch the YouTube or don't get the time a lot of the time and the podcast sort of percolated up. And then Amy, I was talking to you and you were, you were saying about some of the benefits you'd seen through some of your clients and everything else. And I suppose my other worry at the time was uh, if I did a podcast, would I just be talking to thin air and talking about myself and stuff and there's nothing worse than just sitting and listening to a recruiter for half an hour in my opinion as a recruiter <laughs> i can say that um and i think that's one of the one of the problems that I, I i think when i've listened to some podcasts where it's all about them and you know they're just it, it becomes just a, another sales pitch yeah and and actually i've never done that really with our business and this is the reason for creating i i just 
embraced the idea. I thought, you know what? I talk to these treasurers all the time, and I've been doing it for 20 years, and actually can hand on heart say I've never got bored because they, you know, I, I even say it on the podcast that sometimes that, you know, they, they all have the same job title. You know, you might have 100 treasurers in a room. And I did this when I spoke in Chicago, and I said, you guys are all treasure professionals. You do exactly the same thing with exactly the same tools in exactly the same way with the same number of people in the, you know, the team. And they all looked at me like I'd gone mad. And they were like, that's not it, Mike. I went, I know. I've not gone mad. That's what's fascinating to me, that they all do it in a different way. A lot of them have the same tools to use. They all do it very differently. And actually, the stories they have to tell are therefore very interesting and very intrinsically interesting in themselves they're interesting you know finance guys and everything else and you know and that's one of the key things for it i just thought you know what um i should i should share their stories and so the podcast was really just me recording the conversations i was having with a lot of my treasurers and i talk about you know and every week i interview a treasurer about how they got started uh, how they progress their careers. And a lot of the listeners are now, you know, when I've talked to them, they are treasury analysts, managers, or people coming up the curve and in their treasury careers. And they want to know how did, you know, the first ever podcast I did was with Sarah Jane Hall, the global treasurer of GlaxoSmithKline. And she's an absolute legend. She's a lovely lady. But she was talking about what career decisions she made. Um, and she, her recommendation, and we do it at the end of every week's show, is, you know, what would you tell people to do? What advice would you give them? Now, hers was study, study, study. Every person's got a different story and a different thing to share. And I just bring them to life, or they bring them to life, really. And I'm just there to elicit it. And, you know, I did one this morning. I was just asked, and someone, you know, I, I always know when I'm hitting the right bits when the treasurer goes, that's a really interesting question. <laughs> and where, where, you know, oh, I've not thought about it like that. And it's, I know the key thing, sorry, the thing I was going to say, and sort of waffling on, big long <laughs> answer to a short question. But it, it, I, I very much think, I think when I hear podcasts, the key to it is, I've just scribbled down some notes. It's it's not about you. It's about them. And it's like, don't talk about yourself. That will come over anyway. But what my, you know, key to the success, and I, well, I love doing the podcast and it's launched our business a lot further and lots more people know about it is because they know that we know the people they want. You know, we know the global treasury community. So, you know, we're recruiting the number of roles across the US because they actually know that we know those treasurers firsthand. And we yeah. actually, you know, they're in all in our back pocket. And I'm following their careers, whether they're treasury managers earlier on or global treasurers wanting the next move or wanting to recruit. We know them. So it, it's, it's brought that to life, really. And that's the key thing. So going for a podcast was obviously, I think, the really good decision for you because it is sharing the stories that were so interesting that you were having anyway with people, um, showing that you're so well connected in the industry, helping people to grow their careers by hearing such interesting conversations from leaders in the industry. And of course, leaders in the industry get to know, like and trust you so that they can come to you and, and work with you. So podcast, I was never in any doubt that it was a really, really good medium but I think what was potentially going to be the challenge for you um, was the convincing people to listen to podcasts who you know maybe were not actually already actively listening to podcasts and that perhaps you didn't just have to convince them to listen to yours but actually the the medium of podcasting in itself as well so how did you find that from an audience perspective of telling everyone you know I'm launching a podcast and you know come and consume a podcast and people you know did you get great I love podcasts I'll listen or what's a podcast and how how did that go i got everyone i got mm. i got all ends of the spectrum if you like so i had some treasurers that you know uh, that, that just were new to podcasts and they were like how do i download that app through to other guys were like oh yeah i've discovered you and stuff like that and we've got take up from the us we've got take up from the uk and europe we got take up across the world we got in, in listeners in india right the way across and it, you know it's quite inspiring that it's a global thing one of that's one of the reasons um it was interesting just just a point you made there about uh we didn't i didn't ever do it deliberately you know it wasn't like hey you know we're going to do this it was more i wanted to be front of mind and i wanted to if an hr director who doesn't know treasury may be and you know and this is what has actually happened and it 
directly links into without being completely in love with content 10x but we are because they're amazing yes mm-hmm. sign up with them now become clients there'll <laughs> be a sign up thing in the show notes i'm sure um <laughs> but joking aside the the fact was i think the repurposing was key yeah. and that was you know because linkedin is our um, our massive our favorite medium for it in in a way to publicize it yeah you know people will do you know look on facebook and various other bits but where you know we have snippets that the guys repurpose where they take out from the show a, you know a quote here or two and and the different again what you're doing is highlighting the differences uh, you know as well as the commonalities between a number of the treasurers and that's been amazing you know that the people have actually sort of bought into that um you know and we're front of mind all the time i've had hr directors i've had treasury guys we had a finance director just last week said oh i i don't know you guys but we need a treasurer can you help us and the only way that he's seen us is through our linkedin feed and that's just popping up popping up and he connected to one of my colleagues and every week our posts get reshared and it's just interesting copy it's not just like hey we've got a podcast listen it's like this week we've got adam on the show and he talks about a multicultural team that week we've got mark and he made the move globally and every time it's a different story and it's telling the different stories week after week and none of them are the same which is Again, I think, you know, some people have to do episodes, you know, where they do short season runs and things. And I think the regularity, Amy talked to me when I first started and she said, look, you've got to do it every week, each and every week. Um, I mean, the the advice I would give to people is batch, batch and batch some more because it's, uh, you know, it, it's tough with a lot of ours. And we struggled at the beginning of the show because because of the profile of some of our treasurers, they have to get approval from internal marketing teams and things. Generally, there's never any changes. They go, oh, actually, no, it's fine. You don't say anything too contentious and everything else. But getting that approval sometimes can take weeks. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, now we um, what we joke about work. I've got this four by four by four system. And what I want to do, and we've just, we've just done it, actually, you'll start to get there, is having four podcasts already done, edited, and on the top shelf ready you know for the content that you guys have edited it it's ready to go live over the next month and then we've got four that are in editing stage with our editor he's going through cleaning up and then we've got four more scheduled so we know that i could in in a way not do anything for a quarter as such and we'd have you know 12 weeks worth of podcasts ready to go and i think once you get to there you can not relax about it but you can do other stuff as well and i think it's a big commitment but it's been amazing well, the, it reminds me, actually, there's some interesting things that we've done with you. When you first started out, mm. we were working on, it was a video, it was twice a week, wasn't it? So yes. you were doing a weekly video and a weekly podcast episode, mm. and we were repurposing the video into podcast as well. So essentially, you had two podcast episodes a week. Now, that was quite a challenging schedule to keep. Oh, too two two mm. longer form pieces of content were quite challenging weren't they but mm, mm. It, it reminds me that we've actually been able to do quite a few things with video footage that you've been able to get hold of though so um, when you've gone and spoken at some of these great events that you speak at around the world um, being able to get hold of video and audio footage has been really useful for the podcast as well hasn't it because we've been able to share what went on at those events um, in podcast format for your audience too yeah and bring it to life and Mm. you know not just here you go every week and you know we're doing some of the other stuff but actually when i've talked to people you know and i've it's it's still very weird for me when i walk into a room and i had a guy in chicago for instance he he took a photo with himself he said you're mike richards can we have a selfie and i'm like well firstly i'm in english english so that's a bit weird in itself and i'm like uh yeah if you want have you seen this i've got a face for radio mate that's fine um and but he was just like i listen to your show every week i'm one of your followers thank you for all the advice you've get you know given us and everything else i was like well you my my pleasure and i i i did it to sort of to reach out to people and present these stories but the fact that they all want it um it's it's just mental and i've yeah. just you know i've just loved it 
And I think it's just so interesting when I mentioned to you before that um, it was potentially going to be a bit of a challenge to actually convince people to just the medium of podcasting, let alone, you know, to listen to yours, because not everybody would. But what we were so amazed at and how it went so well was that you've done so so well on you know podcast downloads and really grown that audience and it's so I mean obviously you've got fans out there as well Mike so it's amazing oh, no. <laughs> um, but oh, um, the, the, like you said though you already had an existing audience on LinkedIn a very engaged yeah. audience on LinkedIn so the key thing was to repurpose over to LinkedIn but I guess it, what we were focusing on was that like you said it's not just listen to my podcast it's here's the link here's the title it had to be more than that it had to be really engaging sound bites that even if they only listen to that sound bite and they didn't go and listen to the whole podcast because some people just will never and you have to accept that they actually get something from that great tip anyway that was shared and the engaging copy trying to get people to engage in conversations with you all a great quote because I think it's important that when we repurpose yes we would like them to go and consume the longer form piece of content but if they don't we're not just broadcasting it exists but we're actually adding value in the more micro pieces of content that come from it so uh, have you found that people will comment on the posts and the teasers or the, the videos that don't actually go on to consume but still get something from the more micro content that comes from it. I think they then hop on and listen to that that podcast or they you know you get lots and lots of likes. You yeah. go, you know, we've had it where they yeah, like this, like this. And you know, I think a lot of them are sometimes connected or the teams of our guests and things, but it's also then other treasury analysts or managers who are sharing it with their network a little bit so people get the sort of sticky content from there but then in addition to that i think what does happen is you know people jump onto the podcast and, and listen to that episode and then they go oh hang on and a bit like the box set analogy um you know that they go oh hang on I'm, I'm interested in that one and oh that one as well and they because we've got this you know this weekly show format that's out there every single week and i just literally whilst we've been on the phone now I, you know again i can't even believe this so we launched beginning of october 2018 so you know less than a year ago and as of this very minute we've got we've had 10,924 mm -hmm. downloads which is mad it's and I remember mad. you know I remember Amy saying to me before Mike it's not a competition it's not top of the pops <laughs> and I was like it totally is you know? but but I and, and honestly originally I thought it'd be great to get a thousand downloads in the first year mm -hmm. and when we did that in the first month I was just sitting there going what <laughs> really and it's just you know because it's obviously something that people like and uh, that's what i i want to create i mean my wife and kids are completely bored of me talking about podcasts but that's <laughs> enough for me driving along i don't make them listen to my podcast i would add you know that that would just be torture and cruel to them um but you know we have 57 podcasts later and yeah. that's you know it's it's great and it, it doesn't it's not slowing down you know no. that's the thing and an actual fact now what I'm finding is um, it, it's a door opener as well. I know Amy very kindly was, you know, talking to me before. She's got a book coming up, so there'll be a link to that, I'm sure, on the show notes. <laughs> and stuff like that. But for me, mm -hmm. the podcast is also a bit of a door opener. You know, it yeah. actually, um, you know, we put it on, you know, we put it out there and people, you know, I'd say, oh, yeah, I host a podcast. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've heard it. I'm like. Oh, really? Yeah, I really like this episode. So they already, as you said, know me, and a lot yeah. of them like me, but they certainly trust you as well because they say, well, you know all these treasurers, and now we're starting to, you know, gather pace with some of the more senior treasury guys as well. Um, you know, so we've potentially got the uh, – we're hopeful, fingers crossed, to get the global treasurer of Microsoft on the show. Uh, it's just trying to find a slot in his diary. We've got some of the big, big U.S. treasurers who have said, yeah, they're up for it as long as they can get it past their marketing teams. You know, and, you know, that for me is incredible. And also some of the U.K. treasurers, you know, it just gives you that – cachet that actually these guys talk to the top table and they can actually help my career which means that candidates also on the flip side they go right we trust you guys to actually look after our careers and that's all we did it for really 
Yeah, and I think, um, it, you know, it's such an important point that it opened doors, it's getting you to have conversations with people that you may not have had conversations. It's it, it, Obviously, as well, it's just adding a, another edge to the conversations that you have at more social events and things like that as well, when people are saying they listen and you can, you know, engage with them over something a little bit different to some of the usual um, topics. But what I really like about your story is that, when we create content and we invest in content, it, it can be, you know, an investment in many different ways. But when you have a robust kind of consistent content schedule and you are putting it out onto lots of different channels and people start to know, like and trust you, then you truly do see the business benefits as well, not just the content benefits of, you know, some vanity measures of additional like shares, but you've you've truly seen this have a big impact on your business overall haven't you on the bottom line of your it, business basically it's mad mm. it's absolute madness it's, it's really improved everything um you know it's really our us business i i don't think would be a fraction of the size it is mm. now without this uh me social media presence mm. you know th those guys really consume it and actually the fact that i'm getting this feedback from people is just it, it's it's bonkers uh, to use an English phrase. And I got some reviews that came through Chartable recently and I didn't, you know, I, I sort of, I'd never seen them before. And I found that really, um, it was, it was, it, it was just amazing. Actually, some of the stuff, um, you know, I've got one, Mike puts in all the work and the results speak for themselves. And actually I, I want to sort of go back to that guy and say, I do some of the work, I do the talking <laughs> and then, and then Amy gets all the hard work to do something, <laughs> but it's actually recognition and it's just yeah. like, you know, you help me bring it to life, Amy, and that's what Content 10X do. Again, it's not just a, a love fest for uh, Content 10X, but a little bit, you know. Uh, oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah. And would you say that you think it's opened up the doors? I know you, you don't, you know, it's not a big thing for you, but you do do quite a bit of speaking, don't you? And especially over in the US, you go out to yeah. some of the major treasury events. Um, would you say it's opened up more doors with regards to things like speaking opportunities as well? Not only has it brought us more speaking opportunities, when I was in, so I recently spoke at the Windy City Summit, which is the Chicago Treasurer's Conference every year, uh, did it for the seventh year in a row, and other years I've done about LinkedIn and everything else. This year's, you know, speech was actually about the podcast, but not the podcast, but it was actually the content from the podcast and what we just pulled out from the different podcasts and um was that Laura, my ops director, had gone through everyone and found out what were the themes. You know, some people said training was key and these hard skills. And we actually, you know, it's, we did then come up with the treasury uh, skills wheel, which is talking about the major skills that people had kept, the themes that they've been talking about. And I would never have got that. I never have got no. that actual sort of digestible content that actually came out and actually created its own form of content, which is great. Um the other one that really shocked the audience, someone said to me afterwards, oh, you didn't really own that material. I do own the material, but what it was was they said, you know, I was still, and they were right. Actually, they were right. I didn't because I was still, you know, it was the first time I'd ever given this speech and I was sort of still digesting it. But one thing I did follow up with, and actually when I was there at the speech, I said to people, do you know, what? I don't like public speaking. And they were like, what? You know, standing here <laughs> on the stage. It's not, you know, I said, I didn't get up this morning. I said, oh, I just want to stand up in front of 100 people and, do all this chatting and stuff because it's not my natural thing i'll chat and stuff like that but actually i know that what the podcast has also given me is like helped to develop my brain and my thinking and my listening skills i've got so much better in the past you know less than a year and actually that's been fantastic you know that's really given me an extra dimension when i'm talking to treasurers or talking to cfos i'm actually quite i'm much more relaxed with it now because yeah, I've got this, you know, and that's what it's given me that it's given gives you a, a fresh confidence because you really know your subject matter as well, which it was that was a byproduct rather than the main thing. And I think actually you get the exposure in terms of the business. It's just launched it into the stratosphere. You know, our US business is going incredibly well, European, UK and Europe very very well we you know we've got other events coming up this year i'm out in luxembourg and doing uh, speaking in boston at the end of the year as well at each of these treasury conferences and actually the you know becoming a bit more of oh that's mike he has a, yep. you know, the podcast guy oh we can recruit recruits as well yeah he's a person if you want the next best job and they go 
Wow, it's amazing, and it, it, it's been it's been a very interesting, weird journey, if that's the right way. So, yeah, and it, it's really interesting that you said about how you feel like it's helped you with those communication skills. Because um, I was actually talking to someone just earlier today about that, about how um, when you get used to doing podcasting, it can really help you, even if you didn't think that you needed to improve in your conversational skills and questioning mm. skills and mm. things like that. You actually develop um, a different way of listening, a different way of asking questions and things like that which I think is really really useful in business and um, for people who create regular like video content as well as podcast but the people we work with who create regular video have said how you know just more confident overall that they've become because when you do something every week and you and you do it you know consistently you do just become better and better the whole 10,000 hours thing isn't it like the more you do something you do just you gradually become better and more confident and that helps you in other aspects of business as well so really it really intrigues me all of the additional skills you can get from from all of this um into i've got so i've got two final questions for you mike okay um, make them easy, make them easy. <laughs> oh they are so um i know the answer to this but i'm gonna <laughs> ask you anyway so if for people who are listening to this and i hope are feeling really inspired especially if as i said perhaps they don't have the kind of business where it's creating content to go on and sell premium content and content that people have to pay for like memberships online courses and things like that so more like yourself service product-based businesses brick and mortar type businesses what would you say would be your kind of number one tip for getting started with a consistent content strategy that you now have in place probably well a couple of bits in there the f- well the first one is you know as i said earlier in the show batch batch and batch yeah because you know when we said at the beginning and i we found that difficult at the beginning when we launched the show to do a weekly podcast. It's a lot of work. And then when we were doing two a week, that, that was just impossible. We started to fall down. So we thought, right, actually, the, the interview shows with the, the clients are, are key. And that was what was incredible and amazing and great fun. And so that worked. I think the the other one is, as you said, that to get started, you know, to yeah. actually start it, you know, to, you, you know, it's – if you don't do it, it doesn't exist. You know, that's one of the things, you know, sometimes with people's blogs, they say, well, I've written this amazing blog. Well, have you published it? Well, no. <laughs> well, then it's, it could be the most amazing, perfect blog. Even if it's only half finished, get it published, get it out there. Now, you know, blogs and LinkedIn articles, they're, they're you know, they're out there, but they're really difficult to digest. You know, you can't listen to a blog unless it's dictated you know yeah. whilst you're driving driving home you know or whilst you're sitting on the half hour commute you know into the office and things and that's when i you know when i've talked to people say oh yeah i listen to it every day i'm like really i know didn't we but they're still <laughs> catching up and what they do is they love to listen you know to you know i met some guys when i, I did the keynote speech and that was an, again another thing i did for the austrian treasurer's conference and i got that gig because they said oh we loved your stuff we know that you're a good presenter. Could you come and be the keynote for our Austrian conference? I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I met some of the guys afterwards and they were saying how they loved it, you know, bring it to life and everything else. So, you know, to go back to it, you know, you, unless you get started, it's never going to happen. And that, I think a lot of people make all these plans and everything else. Just grab yourself a microphone or do it on AirPods and then you get a better microphone and then you do this, all that equipment stuff. Oh yeah. And you know, I had this microphone sitting in a in a in a box for probably about five or six months. And it wasn't until I really got started that everything started to fall into place. So that's the thing, get started as soon as possible, really. Yeah, absolutely. And don't be overcome by perfection because no. you only get better the more you do it, as we were just saying before yeah. about how many hours. Um, I completely agree with you. We like to say, there's that old saying, done is better than perfect, isn't there? But yeah. um, we like to say uh, in our business, because we do a lot of you know graphics and things like that too that the version version one is better than version none because <laughs> you can yeah. as soon as you've got a version one you can work from it can't you but being paralyzed and not not getting started or not getting things out there is a real shame for some people because it's the only way that you then you know improve so um no and, and your story is, is amazing as i said i think you've been you've done so well as well and i do think a large part of it as well mike is that people enjoy talking to you they like your charm and your wit and everything 
something like that as well, which is, oh, you know, you, sure? <laughs> <laughs> you do. It's got a very good episode. Um, no, you know, it's personality as well. You chose exactly the right thing, um, yeah. right media. It, you know, you'd have been would have been a shame if you'd gone the blogging route because, um, you know, the conversations and everything. That's what helps people to to get to know you and and, and like you. So um, that's really important. And actually, that leads well on. So I said that the last question is actually the easiest of all of them, which cool. is um, so where can people go to find out more about you, contact you, and you know, obviously see and hear this great podcast that we've been talking about. <laughs> well, very easily, you just go to the oh, well, www.treasurycareercorner.com and you're there and you'll see all the podcast episodes uh, the guys at content 10x have done an amazing job and that's one of the things i would say as well i think it would have been fine just doing a podcast and again i'm not just gonna do a sales pitch for you guys but but the way that it actually looks and the way that it actually appears to the audience is actually in some ways as, as key mm-hmm. you know if it was just uh, you know oh this looks all right let's have a listen what you guys do and what the way it now looks you know, our clients go, wow, that's professional. Oh, that's, and it's just, you know, it supports the growth of it. You go to the treasurycareercorner.com, that takes you to the podcast, and you've got all the different episodes. You can filter them and, and stuff. And again, it makes them so digestible, and people enjoy it. And, you know, that's what, you know, I, I just had, it's a great laugh. You know, mm-hmm. that's the key thing as well. It's hard work, but a lot of things are. But hopefully, you know, keep on helping us develop our, as I say, our, UK and European businesses are all already doing well. They're now doing very much better. Our US business is going through the roof. And I think, you know, that's very much attributable to this new content strategy. We're going to be doing more stuff the, later this year and next year. We now do the Treasury Career Corner live as well. Mm-hmm. And that's where I interview three treasurers live on stage. Great piece of content. We record it. We're giving some more to the guys. So those, I think those live events and they just came as a, a bit of a brainwave thinking actually i could talk to these people live on stage and they can mm. ask the questions and that's just taken off and you know i can just say thank you to amy and the team and yeah and it's just been great and I, I, long may it continue and the good thing is we're gonna have a bit of a break over the summer but our podcast won't stop you know no. that's the other gun it will continue it constantly sells whilst you're in the room where, where you're not in the room you, you don't it's you know it's business development on, on acid it just yeah. keeps on turning all the time so and as you said it's whilst it's hard work and, and no one would say it isn't you've seen yeah. the true business benefits which means Bonkers. it's worthwhile yeah, yeah. so yeah. no so i will put the links to every single thing that you mentioned in the show notes so um so yeah so th- you know we really enjoy working with you so thanks for your kind words and let's get it let's get to the next big milestone let's get to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars well, um, 20 thousand yeah. will be let's get to 20 it. next yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on the show I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you. Thanks very much.